There was a spirit throughout the department that we're on not just a job, but a crusade. We're bringing wildlife and forests back to Missouri. We were committed to this conservation mission and cause, and we love working for it. Somebody said the first issue of The Conservationist was a grand experiment. Well, we've been doing a grand experiment ever since. I always told employees that I should never hear them saying that we're the best conservation department in the world, and that our job is to implement the programs and to provide the evidence for other people to make that observation. Evidence for this exceptional success can be seen throughout the state of Missouri. Fish and wildlife abound. For the hunter or fisherman, Missouri is simply a sportsman's paradise. Outdoor recreation is everywhere, easily accessible to every Missourian. In our schools and cities, innovative programs ensure that the benefits of wild things and wild places will continue to be experienced for generations to come. What makes the conservation movement in Missouri so special? Can a look at the beginnings of this journey shed light on the road ahead? It's best to ask someone who was there. In 1935, 17-year-old Bill Crawford attended a pivotal meeting in Columbia, Missouri. The people were really upset in Missouri. We had been through a tremendous drought period, the Dust Bowl days. People were worried about fires on the landscape, forestry-wise. You couldn't hardly find a raccoon in the state. They, the game situations had gone to pot. Everything was just really, really at low level. You know, farmers, the people that hunted and fished, and all the people that were concerned with these resources, and the foresters and so forth, they just weren't getting any house from the politicians. That was a gathering unlike any other before at anywhere at any time. And so that night, the Restoration and Conservation Federation of Missouri was organized. They had the foresight to know that if they wanted to really put something in that would endure, they needed to change the constitution of the state. And they did that by creating a constitutional amendment that changed the way that the Department of Conservation was set up, where our governor would appoint a uh, conservation commission composed of four citizen commissioners, citizen commissioners, and they set it up in a non-political fashion so that we would have two Republicans and two Democrats, so we would take the politics out of our decisions, and that's exactly the way it works. As we celebrate the 75th anniversary of the Missouri Department of Conservation, it's exciting to look back at the vision of those early founders back in 1937. With fish and wildlife resources at low ebb, pioneering biologists rolled up their sleeves and went to work. Their mission was clear, to bring fish and wildlife back to Missouri. Wild turkey was on the verge of being wiped out in the central United States in the 1930s. We had only about 2,500, 2,000 to 2,500 left in Missouri in the most remote Ozark counties. And we have over 500,000 wild turkeys in this state right now. Best wild turkey hunting in the world. The promise was fulfilled. So when you consider that there were only 2,000 deer in the entire state of Missouri in 1937, our deer population was restored to a level where where we now support annual deer harvests totaling 300,000 deer per year taken by archery and gun hunters. That We have over 500,000 deer hunters in our state. The promise of wildlife restoration continues. In the spring of 2011, 34 elk were released at the Peck Ranch Conservation Area in Shannon County. Elk, formerly abundant in the state, had not been seen in Missouri since 1865. Again, 
the promise of wildlife restoration endures. When the department was formed in the 1930s, there was a serious problem standing in the way of fish and wildlife restoration, wildfires. For decades, local residents had torched the spring woods, greening up the open range and cleaning out the ticks and chiggers. The effects of these constant fires were devastating on Missouri's over-harvested and over-grazed woodlands. Burned off hillsides eroded the clear Ozark streams were choked with gravel and mud. Leo Dry saw it firsthand. My objective was to get hold of uh, this wild land and show that it could be managed along conservation lines and not without going broke in the process, selectively cutting it instead of clear cutting it. Dry eventually became the largest private landowner in the state of Missouri. His pioneer forest encompasses over 160,000 acres along the Current and Jack's Fork rivers, all managed sustainably and all preserved for future generations. And he credits the early efforts of the Conservation Department with his success. With the wildfires under control, and modern management techniques brought to bear, the state's woodlands flourished. Today, Missouri timber represents billions of dollars a year in an industry supporting tens of thousands of jobs. Change was coming to Missouri's waters as well. Hatcheries were innovating new management techniques. Fish were becoming available for stocking in large numbers and new delivery techniques were developed for their safe transport and survival. Creel counts, surveys of fish population and distribution were being made across the state. The creation of farm ponds became a particularly successful program. Originally designed to provide water for upland game, the program quickly evolved into the construction and stocking of ponds for recreational fishing. The early leadership in the Department of Conservation realized that we cannot do what needs to be done alone, and so we need to engage others. And at that time, it was primarily farmers and landowners. So there was an early effort to engage the landowners in, in activities, and that was one way to get them involved. The fishing in Missouri is considered some of the finest in the country, with abundant lakes, ponds, and world-class float fishing streams the state has become a preferred destination for dedicated anglers. In our state, all of the people own conservation. They have a stake in what happens here. It's a partnership between all of us and we all benefit from the rewards of it. The experiment that started in 1935 continues today. 75 years since its founding, the Missouri Department of Conservation is strong, streamlined, and eager to address the challenges of the future. Today, Missouri is known for world-class outdoor opportunities, and this is not by accident. Citizens in the state of Missouri have a passion for the outdoors uh, like no other state across the nation. They took it upon themselves. They implemented steps that today place us as a national leader. I would encourage citizens to pause as we celebrate 75 years of conservation in the state and just reflect back, uh, recognize the success of conservation. It's easy to see. experiment has proved to be an overwhelming success. The promise of conservation for all Missourians continues.